There's a lot of detail on there. The more that you look at these, the better they do seem to get. It captures the look of the prototype perfectly. A big hello to you. I hope I find you well. I'm Jenny Kirk, welcoming you up here to Weir Yard. And if I sound a little bit ill, well, that's because I'm still getting over the flu. And I'd like to send a big, big thank you to everybody who sent Get Well Soon wishes. I am slowly, slowly getting better, but it was a really bad bout of flu. But time waits for no one, and certainly Rapido have been making hay whilst the sun shines in bringing out so many new models. It's almost a daily occurrence. It does feel like that the Postman is bringing the latest release from them. And it's so great to see that they are working so hard to be one of the big players in the UK ready to run scene. Now, you might remember that we did the ferry van review, and I was very impressed with that week or so ago. Well, they didn't rest on their laurels. They sent through not one, not two, but three different versions of the Iron Mink Wagon. And then you'd think that that was impressive enough in and of itself. They also sent a GWR four plank wagon, which uh, the prototypes made use of the same underframes. They thought, hey, why not? If we're making the Iron Mink, let's go the whole hog and make one of the sister wagons as well. And this is a really great way of plugging some the gaps in the ready-to-run market and certainly I for one I'm very very appreciative of manufacturers doing this to provide us with a great variety of prototypically correct rolling stock so today is the Rapido rolling stock roundup of those three different versions of the Iron Mink and that GWR four planker and don't forget to tickle that like button and do please share to social media if you can. And if you haven't already done so, do consider subscribing to the video. And we're going to be taking a good look at these Rapido wagons. We've also got an affiliate link in the description box if you like the look of what you see today. And uh, that takes you to Rails of Sheffield where you can pick up the full range of Rapido products. Today's video comes in association with Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts. Find the full range available to order now at tramfabrique.co.uk. Additional support comes from Rocar Prototype Models, where detail, accuracy and value for money go hand in hand. With their debut model of Safepack Auto Racks wowing model railroaders alike, now is your chance to order these in road names and configurations to accurately reproduce auto rack workings from 1974 to the present day on your model railroad. Order today from rocarmodels.com and see the full range for yourself. But I'm actually really excited to take a look at these. I think it's an innovative way of making sure that a tooling suite really does give them maximum returns. And I know in the past I've opined dismay when a manufacturer has released a model and not gone to the effort of making it possible to make a similar model at the same time, because that kind of curses that similar model to be launched into obscurity uh, because no ready-to-run manufacturer, for example, would now consider making a J71 when there's a J72 on the market. Why oh why couldn't we have had both from the same tooling suite with a little bit of innovative design? But Rapido Trains have shown that they are prepared to do just that. So come with me and let's see if they really are up to the mark. <laughs> Rapido have definitely been incredibly busy keeping us supplied with bread and butter wagons, including the Southeastern and Chatham Railway wagons with their very distinctive cupboard style doors, and the Big Four later BR design of the uh, gunpowder wagons, which have been made available and really did sell out incredibly quickly. In fact, if you wanted the Tox lettered or the BR versions, you had to get in incredibly quick. Not resting on their laurels, they recently brought out the ferry van, which we reviewed here on the channel. And that is an amazing work of art. And if you've not seen that review, then I do recommend going and taking a look because it is certainly a head turner with a lot of great features. 
that Rapido have set their sights on really fleshing out their catalogue incredibly quickly, but quickly doesn't mean at the expense of detail. And there are two more types of wagons that have recently been released from them, and they include the Great Western Railway four plank open and the Iron Mink wagons. And in the Iron Mink, we get three actual different variants of the design, which could be considered largely three different wagons. So really, they are not compromising at all. They all come in the standard Rapido trains boxes, which really do make them stand out, especially when you're in the exhibition hall looking across all of the traders. And these are exactly the same form factor as the boxes used by Backman, Daypole and Hornby. So if you're wanting to store the boxes, as I do, then they fit really neatly in amongst your collection. Now, the first wagon I'm going to take a look at is the four plank GWR wagon. And one of the things that I'm really, really impressed with Rapido is that by and large, they are taking on wagons which either we've never seen a ready to run prototype or they are of ones where the ready to run prototype is so long in the tooth that it is well overdue a complete refurbishment and uh, redesign. With the GWR four plank wagon, these were actually quite a long lived bread and butter wagon, although it's one of those things that records are actually a little bit sketchy as to when they finally ran on British railways. Although there are two examples, I believe, that have passed into preservation through being used as internal users elsewhere. And this is a design which, as far as I'm aware, has never been issued ready to run from any manufacturer before. So we've got here catalogue number 925007, the GWR Grey with small lettering as number 14432. There are a number of different versions of this wagon that Rapido are bringing out, and certainly if you wish to build up a range of wagons in your collection, then that is possible with a number of different livery variations and running number variations too. It's also okay to mix and match some of the different eras that these wagons are presented in, because freight stock often didn't get repainted that quickly, and I believe an 8 to 10 year cycle was not uncommon for wagons passing through paint shops, and certainly in many instances they would merely be touched up rather than getting a full repaint. So it's not unheard of for Great Western liveried wagons to survive in BR service, albeit very, very run down, and perhaps with a slight alteration to their running number to match with what BR had them recorded as. The four plank is a type of wagon which for some reason we've not seen a huge amount of ready to run, being far more numerous with the five plank and seven plank versions that seem to be far more ubiquitous. But when looking at photographs from the period, it is clear that there is a lot more variation to wagons than you might imagine. This particular wagon utilised the same chassis as the Iron Mink, and it's one of the reasons that these have appeared not that long after the Iron Minks have been brought to the market. And I'm really grateful to Rapido Trains UK for generously sending over not just the GWR four plank wagon, but also the three different variants of the Iron Mink, which I'll be showing you today. And it just shows really the thought that has gone into Rapido Trains' releases that um, they have taken into account the other wagons that they could produce using commonality of underframes. And um, I, I do like this. It very quickly builds up a good representation of the different wagons that did once run on the network. In with the wagon, we've got this little bit of a data sheet, uh, which just gives us a little bit of information about uh, separate detailed parts. And I'm just looking and uh, don't appear to have any with this wagon. I'm just looking in there, there's none to add. And I can only assume that with different versions has uh, different door bangers that can be added, but uh, not on this version. On the other side, the GWR diagram 021 open, we've got a uh, little bit of a potted history. 
it was the case that the GWR's open wagons evolved from simple, archaic one-plankers to this much more contemporary-looking four-plank design in actually just 16 years. They were introduced in 1886, uh, which makes these very, very long-lived. And uh, the four-plank 10-ton capacity shared its underframe with the Iron Mink van, as I said before. The GWR built thousands and thousands of four planks with either single-sided lever brakes or DCI brakes, with some minor detail differences, until the fifth plank was added to the design in 1902, producing a design which we're probably a little bit more familiar with ready to run. Later on, new regulations mean that additional brake levers were, would be added to the wagons, and despite being built in huge numbers, these wagons remained in the shadows for all their lives. And as I said in the opening, it's actually quite difficult to track when they finally disappeared from the network. And it's only because the GWR 813 Preservation Fund, which owns the only four survivors, that we actually have any surviving examples of these wagons. I do love the potted history that we get uh, with these, and it really does give a degree of colour to uh, the usage and also time periods that these wagons were suitable for. A hallmark of the Rapido wagons is this incredibly detailed underframe, and unlike some other manufacturers, we only get a small protrusion of the Rapido branding, which doesn't interfere with that detail that is present. They're fitted with metal, single spoke wheels, which are pretty nice and free running, and then we've also got the slimline tension locks fitted in NEM pockets, with the mounting point hidden largely between the wheels, which makes it unobtrusive if you want to remove these and replace with something else. This particular example features brake gear on both sides and looks to be the later addition due to changes in regulations. It would appear that the original braking would be on this side, with brake blocks that act on both axles, whereas on the other side, we have a braking gear that only applies a braking force to this single axle. These are merely hand brakes and would be worked by staff either to stop the wagons from rolling away or in situations where brakes were pinned down for descending a hill. So these wouldn't have really affected its running, particularly on the main line. The application of this braking gear is incredibly well detailed with separate metal handles with the white painted ends and some really quite detailed v-hangers i particularly like the rendition of these brake blocks as well the w irons are very very detailed we've got air gaps all the way through where it matters and you can see those really quite beefy springs and with the bump stops actually really nicely modelled just underneath there to stop those springs from being able to go all the way up and uh, cause damage as they start to invert. The chassis on these, you can see the angle iron that it appears to have at the ends there, is really quite a fine moulding. And you can even see some of the metal structure that would have supported the body on the real wagons. I also really like We've got these holes all the way through, and it's just a little bit difficult to try and catch it. There we are. And you can see they really do go all the way through. The printing on these is fairly spartan as per the prototype, but it's really, really sharp and distinct. And the Great Western Grey Green is particularly well represented here and looks the part with this slightly off-white lettering and numbering printed over the top. On the other end, we've got the tear weight 5.0 tonnes, and it would appear that both ends of the wagon are crisply moulded with the rivets on those uh, corner protection metal panels, and the uprights really well detailed too, and that's the same as we get at the other end. The side doors are a fairly simple design. You can see we've got this moulded representation of the chains that would have locked them in place and then hinges underneath. There's no door bangers on this example that I can see and we didn't get any in the box. So I'm going to assume that not all versions actually had protective door bangers. On the inside of the wagon, 
Again, this is something which I've seen a lot of wagons ruined by having what appears to be a very poor rendition of the colour of the wooden insides. Now, wood is something that is a little bit difficult to kind of pin down the colour that looks right, and certainly it would fade and go quite washed out and light coloured with age quite quickly. And the shade that Rapido have chosen does seem to be pretty credible, although on the inside, whilst we do have some vertical lines in the planking, there doesn't seem to be much evidence of the internal workings of these, although that is something that can be quite a limitation of injection moulded techniques. The coupling hooks on the buffer beam feel like they're metal, and certainly would be fully functional. Looking at that, the three link coupling would be very, very simple to add to these to be fully functional. The buffers are not sprung, but are very, very finely moulded, and I particularly like the rendition there. We've got the bolts that would hold these into the buffer beam of the wagon, and certainly all of the detail that we see here is very, very fine and well represented. All in all, this is a great wagon, and certainly plugs another gap in the ready-to-run market. Sharing its underframe with the Iron Mink wagon, Rapido have also sent over the three different detail variations of these that they have in their range, and there are a large number of different livery options available. But you can see here the three that Rapido have sent over incorporate the Great Western Railway gunpowder van, and that's the improvised gunpowder van, as catalogue number 908011, running as running number 11346. We've also got the Iron Mink with GWR Grey 25 inch lettering as number 57066, catalogue number 908002. And finally, the Iron Mink with the GWR Grey Sand Van lettering, catalogue number 908014, running number 35374. And one of the things that Iron Minks lasted particularly well in was some degree of departmental use, and they found a lot of use as sand vans, even through into British Royal days. Again, as per what we had with the four plank wagon, we've got a potted history of the GWR Iron Mink with this data sheet featuring in all of the wagon boxes. And the Great Western Railway's V6 Iron Mink is the most recognisable designs that came out of the Swindon Wagon Drawing Office. With shortages of timber, actually forced the GWR to build vans from metal. And it wasn't until 1888 that what could be called the standard Iron Mink appeared. With over 4,000 of these built up to 1901, they were very long-lived, with examples surviving through and until British Railway days in revenue and departmental services, and they were quite well-travelled too, with some recorded as far north as Inverness. So these are certainly a wagon which are suitable for modellers of any geographical location in the UK. Four complete iron minks do survive, and a number of van bodies in addition to that too, as uh, I have actually seen iron minks bodies, for some reason, being turned into improvised buffer stops, amongst other things, and also quite popular as grounded permanent way storage vans as well. The three different versions that Rapido are doing do vary quite considerably in some of the different detail differences, and to all intents and purposes could be regarded as three different wagons. The most common one that is instantly recognisable here with these large recessed doors and the vents at the end is this one with the large 25 inch Great Western lettering. This, you can see, features similar chassis to what we saw in the four-plank wagon, but this appears to be predating the second set of uh, uh, handbrake levers being applied, so it is completely unbraked from this side, and with the braking applied to both axles from this side only. It has that same underframe. There's a lot of detail on there. The more that you look at these, the better they do seem to get. There's a lot of rivet detail too, and the look of this Iron Mink, with their, particularly their curved corners, is captured really, really well. 
It's one of the most iconic Great Western vans, I must admit, and it surprised me that until now it just hasn't appeared ready to run, but Rapido have certainly staked their claim and produced an incredibly good wagon for this model. The roof too has that characteristic overhang and the three riveted strips dividing it into four sections and then we've got these rounded edges and it captures the look of the prototype perfectly. The running number is printed very very sharply on the end and this great western grey with a hint of green again is a perfect rendition to my eyes. On the sides we've got the typical great western flowing almost like a handwriting font for the 10 tons tear weight 6 tons 100 weight and again the running number applied. These also have the same single spoke metal wheels, very free running, and the couplings in slimline NEM pockets in the underside with the mounting points between the axles. It's exactly the same chassis as that four plank wagon. The next wagon here you can see has these different flatter doors on the side. During the war, a lot of these wagons were pressed into use as improvised gunpowder wagons, and they do look quite similar to the gunpowder wagon that Rapido released a little while back, which uh, we were very, very pleased to review here on the channel. And it's probably one of the reasons that the Iron Minx was such a good conversion, because being similar, they would have shoehorned themselves into that role quite conveniently. Again, we've got that roof, this time finished in the grey, there's a lot of printing on the side and I do like this notice that we've got here. No naked flames to be brought close to this van. I believe it may say something like that. I can't actually read it with my naked eye but it'll be really nice to see just what shows up under magnification. The red cross on the door, it really does stand out and it, it says danger. To my eye this is a wagon that I would be very wary going up to and I guess that was the point. Although there does appear to be a slight chip in that red paint there, but it's not unsurmountable and these wagons would have been used and abused in real life, so nothing that might not have been seen in real life. The GPV there in red is really quite crisp and the red has no bleed through from underneath, which is a problem which I have seen afflict red printing on wagons before. The rest of the lettering is sharp and clear, and on the ends you can see where the ventilators have been blanked off. This particular wagon has the later addition of the handbrake on the other side that we saw on the four plank wagon and everything else seems to be pretty much the same. The final example from the Iron Minx here again has yet another different type of door and these are more familiar to those who have seen the more standard goods vans that both BR and before them the Great Western Railway used with these vertical planks. Looking around the wagon we also have additional detail on the side there for the uh, door securing posts so that when the doors were opened and folded back on themselves they could be secured and the wagon even be shunted say into a building without any risk of the doors flapping over and becoming damaged and that's something which neither of the other two versions have. We do have the vent again on the end. I'm just going to take a look there. It does appear to be, yes, it's the same design of vent. Again, this version of the wagon has the additional handbrake on the side, and you can see that this is lettered up for Sand Van, Reading West Junction, and this is a role that a lot of uh, these wagons were pressed into, holding the dried stocks of sand for the locomotive sanding gear and being metal it meant that they were particularly good at keeping out any of the damp and you really don't want any damp getting into that sand that's for the locomotive sanding gear. I also like this legend on the side, not to run more than three miles on the main lines, signifying that this very much was a departmental wagon that wasn't really intended to travel all that far and it may well be that these feature a uh, 
slightly more lacklustre axle box design, which would have very quickly risked getting a hot box. But I don't see any differences between the different versions of these iron minks on the axle boxes, but it may just be that these wagons were maintained to a lower standard because they weren't expected to travel all that far. Again, we've got the grey roof with the characteristic design for these iron minks with those rounded corners that really do make these vans stand out. Everything else on this wagon is exactly as you would expect, and the detail finish really is lovely. When it comes to running, these wagons again performed faultlessly on Weir Yard, making their way through all manner of different point work without any issues whatsoever. They're very free running and it would be perfectly possible to produce a very, very long train with these with no risk of derailments or significant pull on the locomotive. For any modeler of the Great Western Railway, these are absolutely essential. You cannot have an effective Great Western Railway without these iron mink wagons. And as is made clear in the data sheet that comes with these wagons, they did roam far and wide under various circumstances. So certainly for a BR era layout, you could justify these for any part of the country. And I guess even during wartime as well, the improvised gunpowder vans may well have traveled quite far too. With different versions to suit Great Western, even Cambrian railways, some private owner liveries, including some very, very distinctive yellow uh, ferrocrete versions and the blue salvage for victory wagons. There is a lot of variety amongst the iron minks that Rapido has introduced and a bit like Pokemon, maybe you've got to get them all. So we turn now to the scores. First up is build quality, and I have to say I'm very impressed with how well these wagons have withstood all of my handling. There's nothing that's come off, and even with all of this quite delicate detailing on the brake rigging, there's no sign of anything trying to make a mystery bid for freedom. Everything is pretty secure, and even the couplings stay where they're meant to with no real sign of droop, which for me is very important for reliable running. And with the four plank wagon, again, we have great detail, which has not been done at the expense of robustness. And with nothing to fault, I'm gonna give this a 10 out of 10. On running quality, they were by and large pretty good. Not having any droop to the couplings did help a lot. Certainly that's been an area which some wagons in recent years have fallen down a little bit, being the cause of mystery derailments, but we didn't get that with these. The only area where I might have a little bit of criticism is that they did seem to be a little bit on the light side. It does mean you can run quite a long train, but it is something that I do prefer my wagons to just have a little bit more weight to them, just for peace of mind. But overall, pretty good, and I'm going to give them a 9.6. On DCC fitting and innovation, well, DCC fitting doesn't count, but innovation. With the Iron Mink, what I love is we've got all of these different detail variations. It has to be said that Rapido could probably have tooled up for just one of these distinctive Iron Mink designs, and nobody would have really thought too badly of them for that, but they've done three different wagons here, and I think that the model railway world is much richer for that too. And not content with that, identifying that the four plank open used exactly the same chassis. It's like, hey, why not? Let's just bring that wagon out too. And they did, and here it is. And the detail on that chassis is absolutely great. I particularly love those little hole cutouts there, which are quite distinctive. And once you see them, it really does make you think that that has got a lot of thought gone into all of that. So all in all, I'm going to give this a 9.0. On accuracy and quality of finish, there really isn't much to fault at all. The only area where I could split hairs is the little tiny chip on the red on this improvised gunpowder wagon. But really, I'd feel like a little bit of a loser if I took off score for something as insignificant as that, given the quality of the rest of the wagon. And actually, all of these others 
are pretty much perfect all the way through. I even really like the shade of brown that has been used to represent this faded and careworn wood on the interior of the four plank wagon. So hey, let's give it 10 out of 10. When it comes to price, I can find these at £27.95, and that's whether you're buying any of the Iron Minks or the GWR four plankers. They're all the same price. That is a discounted price, and you can find that through the affiliate link in the description box down below. And it does seem to be a pretty good price compared to what a lot of other wagons are being retailed for today. Although it will get a little bit expensive if you want a significant rake of these. And my only criticism would be that Rapido have brought out so many nice things that uh, it's going to get expensive trying to buy them all at once and they don't hang around once they're sold out uh, it seems that Rapido let the tooling rest for some degree of time so unfortunately you do have to buy them when they come out or fear missing out which unfortunately seems to be becoming quite the thing so I'm going to give these a 8.6 on value for money giving us an overall score of 47.2 which is a thoroughly respectable score for a really great set of wagons and I'd like to thank Rapido Trains for sending these over to the channel for review to let us take a good close look at them. Well I hope you enjoyed today's video and found it informative too and we have of course got an affiliate link down below taking you to Rails of Sheffield where you can pick up the full range of Rapido Trains UK products. But if there's one criticism that I will always level against Rapido, and yeah, you know who you are, it's that you move on from a model really quickly and we don't get a follow-on run. And some of these have proven so popular in the past that unless you swoop in in the uh, first few days of them being released, it's actually really impossible to get hold of some of these things. So please, please, please do consider doing a second run of any wagons that sell out really, really well. But I'd love to hear from you. What did you think about these wagons? You saw them there on the screen with a lot of detail on that common chassis between them. And are these wagons that maybe you've got for your collection, have you got actually any of those really colorful private owner versions? That bright yellow ferrocrete really does stand out. Or the Cambrian Railways red one. That's one which, I'll be honest with you, kind of fancied one of them but when I've looked around they seem to have sold out very very quickly which goes back to what I was saying before but I would love to hear from you in the comments section do please leave me your thoughts and it's a great way to find out extra information that maybe I missed in filming this video please like share and subscribe and check us out over on Patreon as well, where we've got a number of different of tiers of rewards to suit every pocket to help you to support the channel to make the videos that you want to see. And we've also got our full merch store, so you too can be resplendent in the Gronk It Up hoodie, or maybe Billy's replacement speakers. They're all there, and certainly they are always proving popular. But until next time, this is me, Johnny Kirk, saying you take great care of yourself. Happy modelling, bye for now. Today's video comes in association with Trainomatic, makers of DCT decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts. Find the full range available to order now at tramfabrique.co.uk. Additional support comes from Rocar Prototype Models, where detail, accuracy and value for money go hand in hand. With their debut model of Safepack Auto Racks wowing model railroaders alike, now is your chance to order these in road names and configurations to accurately reproduce auto rack workings from 1974 to the present day on your model railroad. Order today from rocarmodels.com and see the full range for yourself. I'd like to send out a huge thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon, and an extra special huge thanks goes out to. Anthony Kidson, Offshore Allen, Michael Lockie, Helen Sink, Gary Lewis, David Quinn, Sparky107107, George Botterini, Chris Moss, Robert Steers, Sam Yates, Dale Williams, John N. from NC, NYM Arish, Jonathan Foster, Peter, Clifford Ison, Larry W. Grant, NI Railways 4000 Class, 
Ian Coulson, Alan Dickerson, Eddie Papair, Karen Nicholl, Medwin Williams, Crossways Point Junction, 3B Rail, Jennifer Horton, Trains with Nick, and Simon Snow. Thank you. Without you guys, I couldn't do this.